Now this is the edge as it arrives from the lumber mill. You notice it's actually fairly discolored and there's a little bit of checking in the edge. So when I want to get to the end of my board, I don't want to have it right up to the edge. I want to bring it in maybe an inch and a half, two inches. I'm just going to strike my first cut line and then I'm going to use just any kind of steel straight edge. Um, again, I would not recommend using a standard tape measure for this because you're not exactly hanging the hook on the end. Because I'm not doing the most precise measurements here, I'm just kind of getting a rough dimension. I'm going to go the 36 and 3 quarter. And then using the speed square, this is important to use on the same edge, set it up, and then strike your second cross cut line. And one more way to avoid any kind of confusion, just give yourself an X on both sides of the cut line so you know this is your waist side. This is not necessarily what you have to have in your shop, but it does really come in handy. This is a saw bench. It's, it's something that's been used for hundreds of years. It's a fairly simple frame just built up out of dimensional lumber from the hardware store. But it does have a slot down the middle, and I use this when I'm ripping wood down its length, and this movable fence, and I can use this when cross-cutting wood. It's a really great way to hold the wood stable. And it puts the wood in a better position rather than trying to cut it on my workbench. I can cut a little bit lower and use some gravity to my advantage. And you can see this fence is great, it just kind of holds a piece of wood up against it. So I'm going to make my first cut. So I'm just using a generic Stanley sharp tooth saw. These are available at pretty much any hardware store, even at your big box stores. Um, it has induction hardened, te hardened teeth, and these are not able to be resharpened, but you really don't need to. These things last for years, and they're so cheap, maybe $20, $25. A couple years down the road, if it starts to cut pretty poorly, just pitch it and grab a new one. But um, it's a really great tool for using for doing cross cuts. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I start a cut, and I'm going to use my left hand and my thumb specifically to guide the saw for the very first cut. And every time you make a cut with a saw, you need to start with a kerf. It's really difficult to just go ahead and ram the saw down and start cutting without getting a kerf cut to establish where the saw is going to cut. Now, it can be a little bit dangerous getting your thumb so close to the blade, but it's important to have your thumb to support the saw as you drag it back to the outside of the line. Now you notice I don't have a line drawn this way that establishes whether or not that cut is perpendicular. And there's a, a trick you can learn and also a benefit of having a newer saw with a shinier saw plate is as I move this saw you can see the reflection adjust here. So I'm going to use my eyes to watch that reflection on the saw blade and actually once it kind of lines up I know that saw is square. I'm going to start my cut. And you'll notice I am still cutting just slightly proud of my line because it's always better to keep that line. If that line disappears, you lose your frame of reference. This last part of the cut, it's also important to have some support for this off-feed piece. I'm going to reach my hand around here and support it just slightly, not enough to pinch the blade, to finish the cut. Okay. Now, Using a handsaw effectively is going to take some practice, and one of the best ways to get good with it is to learn how to hold the saw properly from the start. And you'll notice I use my index finger to guide along the handle of the saw. What this can help me do is it helps me actually steer the blade of the saw. You notice we're all very good at pointing at things, we can point right at it. So having this finger continue to point along the saw, I can guide that blade. Now you will notice the saw blade is very thin and also very, very flexible. So how in the world do you keep it cut straight if you're pushing against a flexible piece of steel? If you push against it, it's just going to move. But if you can saw in a sort of an oscillating motion like this, you're letting the thickness of the blade this way support the saw plate and not flex so much. If you find yourself sawing and the blade tries to do this, it's going to ruin the cut. It's actually going to bow and cut way outside the line or way inside the line and really just give you a terrible, terrible finish. So I'll just show you what happens when you get a little bit of practice and when you get pretty familiar with the saw. And I've kept my line, my cut line, just proud of the actual reference line. I don't want to lose that line. And I got a pretty decent cut with really not a ton of work.